When you arrive at the church for your Lenten walk, you will step inside the fellowship hall and just inside the door, container with a pink lid, and inside that box is a paper with your directions, walking humbly with our God. As you come around the corner, you will see our sign. This verse comes from Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. Our first station, you will make your path around the parking lot. This can be done by driving as well as by walking. If you're unable to walk, then please take the time to slowly drive the path and experience the solitude and the love of God. As you begin your journey up the hill, let us start by reading Isaiah 40, verse 31. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Please take time to experience God all around you as you complete this walk. Be still and know that I am God. Psalm 46, verse 10. Your walk begins as you move up the hill. If you come tomorrow, you may experience some ice. I recommend waiting Tuesday. I know we're supposed to have a lot warmer weather. I am staying over on the grass because it seems to be a little less slippery, but you will be free to walk on the roadway. As we make our way to station one, pay attention and look at all who have come before us and all who have gone on to join their Lord in glory. Some of the stones are very old, misshapen at this point. Some are newer. Some are people that we personally have known. Many are from families we have known. But all who have come before us have gone on to join their Lord. As we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Hebrew 12 verses 1. We will now look at the symbols of the saints. As we begin our path, we see and re read the names of many who have come before us during Rhodes' 200 years of ministry. Notice the names that are on these stones. Notice the old stones whose names have long since disappeared. Notice the stones of those of more recent times. Examine your heart and remember someone whose name you read today. As we continue on our journey, we head to the desert as Jesus did after his baptism. While Jesus resisted sin temptation during his desert time, we each come burdened with the history of our failures. Be they sins, burdens that we carry of those things we feel we didn't do well enough, or just plain old grief that visits each of us in the fallen world. It is not wise to start any journey with heavy baggage, the weight of unforgiveness of ourselves or others. So at this first station, pause in your plan to journey further and welcome the gift of grace in the one wounded places of your heart. Sand, write a word, name, symbol of that burden, baggage you carry in the sand. Allow yourself time to imagine walking without this weight on your heart. When you are ready with the love of a compassion beyond our understanding, rake the sand clean of your mark. Station three, stone. The path we travel is often hard and we face unexpected difficulties and hardships, like rocks on our path, 
These often turn into blessings and places where we grow in our trust and our faith deepens. Consider also that it is the house built upon a rock that stands against the storms of life. And sometimes we can become hard-hearted and bitter when we can see no good future and we allow our hearts to become hard as a rock. Take time to envision what can happen if we allow God to bless all the rocks of our life, to find wisdom through an unexpected hard time, to strengthen your foundation, or to soften your hardened heart. Praise God who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Stone. Reflect on the variety of rocks that you may encounter on your journey. Some are smooth while others are jagged. Some are large while others are small. Some are colorful while others are plain. Imagine God as you walk without stumbling. Station four. We're gonna take time to remember our baptism. We're going to look at shells as they reflect who we are and where we have been. A station four, the seashell, especially the scallop shell, is an ancient symbol of baptism. Lent began as a time to prepare new Christians and instruct them in the faith culminating in baptism on Easter. When Jesus was born, God spoke to him saying, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. In baptism, you are also received as God's beloved child. Such a shell that reminds you of yourself, maybe a broken or chipped one, perhaps a worn one, or one which makes a good presentation. Hold your empty shell tenderly as a precious child and allow this title, Beloved, to fill your empty heart and become real. I lift mine eyes to the hills. We have arrived at Station 5, where we will take a moment to read Psalm 121. I will lift mine eyes to unto the hills, from whence comes my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy night right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. My, the glory of God in all its splendor. We will now move towards station six, the old oak tree. As we approach the tree, take time to examine this tree. You will come upon its branches long before you become its trunk. Look at the many directions that the branches reach out. We're still getting a glimpse of this glorious sunset. Notice that pieces have been lost over time. You see broken branches. Gently rub your fingers over the rough bark that has endured more than 100 years. It is rough and sometimes dam damaged by the ravages of wind, rain, and animals but it stands tall and strong. It is deeply rooted 
in the soil as we should be in our faith so that it can withstand the challenges that time places upon it. It has heard the laughs of children and the sorrows of those who have lost a loved one. It stands as a reminder of God's strength in the storms of time. And when you look in the center, you will see what God sees in us, not the ragged branches all twisted and turned, but the heart and soul of our being. We will make, continue our journey as we come around the corner. Notice that there are different ways that you could turn as our path often has. We could go to the right, we could go to the left. We could venture off the path and go towards the schoolhouse. But we're going to stay on the path today as we move to another station, Station 7, Seeds. One of the great mysteries in life is life itself, the cycle of harvest and planting of growth and transformation. How a seed must die in order to bring to fruition more of its own kind. How a butterfly that comes from a caterpillar which seems nothing like its final beauty. More, we must think of the abundance of God, how we are offered harvest from seed we did not plant, and how we plant, not expecting that our own hands will harvest, but plant anyway, because we are establishing our place as part of a greater scheme. Some are, some are round, some are elongated, some are very small, some look like trash, but all the same, they are seeds. Each one with the capability for producing after its own kind. Choose one and imagine the possibilities within this one seed, the perfection of that potential. Now look in the mirror and imagine the possibility of a mature you that is carried in the divine imprint of your being. Each of us is called to be the best impression of our own potential and no other. Just as a corn seed will not produce an apple so we are to follow the design of our gifts and graces within to nurture our growth, growth to become fully developed humans. As we continue our journey, we walk down the hill or we drive down the hill and we're gonna come all the way around to our fellowship place under the pavilion where we are safe and where we can care for each other. There are so many memories within the walls of this church, within the land that surrounds it, within the pavilion. Please take time to enjoy and think about all the things that have made Rhodes Church special to you and to your family members over their years here. Think of those special memories that only you may carry. Maybe they're memories with many, times of joy and certainly times of sorrow. After a bit of a walk, I arrive at station eight under our pavilion. I'm going to head over to the chair. As you see, we are looking at John 13 verse 34. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Sit and meditate. Just as Jesus experienced fully what it was to be human in a physical body, he experienced the lonesomeness that we also encounter. He offers us a unique companionship in his promise to be with us even to the ends of the world, with titles like friend and beloved. Have the courage to claim the personal relationship you have been gifted. 
Even more personally, you are offered comfort in the times of your deepest need to be held by the Holy Spirit. Sit in the stillness of the outdoor shelter, wrap yourself in the arms of your caring and gentle friend, and simply be at peace knowing that you are safe in God's arms and will be for eternity. Say a prayer of praise as you remember the life of Rhodes United Methodist Church, of which you are a vital part. Worshiping together, making apple butter, creating prayer shawls, quilting, making dresses, gathering kits for conference, canning, singing, teaching Sunday school, working at Vacation Bible School, Lord's Acre, Christmas caroling, United Methodist Win, men, Women, United Methodist Men, Youth Group, Cooking Spaghetti, Family Supper, Sip and Chat, Providing Flowers, Advent Readings, Church Picnics, Ice Cream Socials, and Lifting Up Our Friends and Loved Ones in Prayer. So now we just have a short venture over to the other bench where we will come upon Station 9 and we will experience and discuss where will you hold or store your treasures from Matthew 6 verse 20. And we have a box. Inside is our sparrow, which is not being contained in its cage, but being allowed to freely fly away. Station nine, box of treasures. As I sit and listen to the birds singing in the distance, it reminds me that we are journeying through the season of Lent and have come to the place where the holy things are. In the sealed box, God commended the Hebrews to place the sacred things that remind them of him so they would not forget. But what reminds God of us? How are we remembered by the divine? We were told that God has the eye on the lilies of the field and on the sparrows of the air. How much more is his care for us? Take just a moment and consider what you treasure, how you store it, hide it, lock it away, or hold on to it tightly. Look, see the sparrow not caged in a box, but set free to fly away into the creation of a new spring and to sing its song of a new morning that has broken and to be its witness. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free, for his eye is on the sparrow, and I know he watches me. May you be blessed as you consider your journey of faith. Before leaving, please read the last two verses of scripture. Very short, but so powerful. Philippians 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, I say rejoice. And then Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Have a blessed day.